What's up, everyone? Thank you for joining us today. Italian Sins Do It Better. We have a special guest for you today, Mr. Joe Vardy. Woo! Hey, I, was, I was waiting for the uh, like big applause. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, that was one, me. One, that, that was one me. clap. It was one clap. Right. It's on me. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Joe, I, I want to appreciate that you're here with us. It, no it's, an, it's a true honor. Absolutely. Um, longtime fan. Yeah. Um, love your shows. Love Thank your you, skits. Man. Thank you, um, man. At the end of the day, it's... You know, no matter what part of Italy you are from, it all circles back together. You know, mm -hmm. all the jokes relate to the families that grew up that way. And yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Right. I came on to tell you the Calabrese do it better. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is the end of the interview. Yeah. So that, I'm done now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a pleasure. Thanks. For, thanks very much for having me, guys. Yeah, no problem, man. I, everyone's always, always open for you here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So tell us. Um. How did this all start? Like, at what age? So I, I, I wanted to be a rock star. Right? That's how it all started when I was a kid. I, I just remember watching the Beatles and going, I want to be that guy. You know, I wanted, I want, what was that, what was that uh, transaction? Why, why were all those women going crazy mm. over those four guys on that stage? What was happening? Mm. And I was fascinated by that transaction. And I'm, all I knew is that I wanted to be the guys on the stage. Mm -hmm. And so I started playing music and so on. And now if you hear me sing, mm -hmm. you'll know why I never became a rock star. Hey, okay, oh, right I was now. hoping to hear some tune. Yeah. No. <laughs> so even though I did sing in the show, mm -hmm. it's just parody. So you, as a comedian, you can get away with having a bad voice. Right. But the real clincher was that my dad goes, no, no, no. In, in Calabria, not just on a rock star. Right? No rock stars in Calabria. Go get a, a degree. So mm -hmm. I got a degree in food science. Well, while I was there, hmm. then I, I won a scholarship to do honours. And because of the, the experiments that we were doing in the lab would take a long time, right. I had a lot of downtime. Mm. And I thought, and I had this ability to remember jokes. I thought, hmm, maybe I can do comedy because then I can be still the front man. Right. I can still be with me with the microphone. Yeah. I don't have to worry about a band. I can still be the star. Awesome. Right? But let me try this. And so I did. I tried it out. And then one night I got, I, I, I made an appearance on TV and it was a big popular show in Australia. And then they had the Italian Song Festival of Australia. So, so basically they got Italian kids in Australia to sing Italian songs, but in Australia. And they needed someone to fill in 20 minutes while the judges were making their decision. Wow. So the organisers, the promoters said, oh, there was that guy on TV recently that Italian-Australian guy, why don't we ask him? So they got me to do it, but this was the clear, this is where it all started. Because they were all Italian in the audience, I started doing material that I couldn't do at the comedy store. Right. It, it related to you. Because, you know, there weren't Italians there. Right. So I thought, they're all Italian. I'm going to do my nonna jokes. You know, and, mm -hmm. and I think the first one that I said, I was, you know, has anyone got a nonna when you, you know, when you go over to her house, you open up the olive, uh, the butter container, and there's olives. Bang, big laugh. <laughs> you know, my nonna would say, go and beat me two patati. And I'd go and get two potatoes, I'd bring them back, and that's all you bring, so do it. Right. Bang, big laugh. Wow. Okay. This, this is getting a bigger laugh than my English stand-up. Mm. And then the phone didn't stop ringing. Can you do my wedding? Mm -hmm. Can you do the oh. Italian feast? Can you do mm. my son's? baptism mm -hmm. and it started building from that mm -hmm. and then i thought well i gotta do this all right well here's an idea let's do a one-man show and i got all my english material all my italian material make sure they were all italians in the room I, I i didn't get paid for it. i just said to my friend you sell the tickets let's just try it out and bang it worked and and then i recorded an album in 1999 september the 10th 1999 that went out everywhere in australia on cassette and that would hit number one, I believe, right? Well, the next album did in Canada, right? Mm. So then by that time, remember Napster? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, Napster so, for you guys out there. It's like Netflix, it's, but music. Dial up. Remember that, kids? Yeah, dial up, yeah. <laughs> so in 2000, 2001, someone put one of my clips, it was Nordle's car accident, mm -hmm. onto Napster. It spread all through America, all through Canada, into Europe. And basically, to use an old cliche, I've been touring ever since. That's nice. a, that's 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 awesome. You know? nice. So that's the quick story. Do you, okay. do you still miss wanting to be that rock star, or is this your new? No. Nah, well, then I, you know, then I 
I kind of became rock star of comedy, really. There you go. And, yeah, and, I, and I spent a lot of time living that life, mate. I'm not awesome. sure we can tell these stories. I got to say, this is one clip that I saw you do yeah. that I could watch a million times. And I actually, we just made my family watch it before coming down here. Was when uh, you were talking about fathers yeah. doing a speech <laughs> at an Italian <laughs> wedding. Yeah, 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 that yeah. is gold. Because <laughs> I could watch videos when I was young of my uncles, even at the table when they used to pass the mic yeah. on to, to thank the bride and groom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And either they didn't, never knew where the camera was. Yeah. Or the microphone was just wandering around. You see, my family's a little different. My parents go, do we really? I never we never went to events. You get the you the or so a question for you, Joe, uh, that could relate to most of the talent generations. So a lot of parents that you know came from the motherland yeah. and uh like you want to pursue this career comedy, like I want to pursue this promotion thing I was doing. Yeah. It was just never enough because you have to work to support your family with a hammer. Yeah, that's right. Did you get support from your family when you first started? Well, okay, so this is what the thing was. My dad said to me, he said, get a degree and do whatever you want. So when I said to him, I wanted to do, I wanted to be a, because he was, but he had a point, my dad, Yeah. because I was learning to play guitar, but my guitar teacher was one of the best guitarists in Australia, right? But. He would rock up to my house to teach me to play the guitar. But my dad said, can we, we can speak Italian here, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. He got, so we, we, he'd, he'd leave. And my dad goes, Ma questo è un mezzo sono a guitarra. I said, yeah. Ma guarda che macchina che andava. It was a shitbox. Okay? It was a, the, the, the car was a beat up old piece of shit car. Yeah, yeah. And my dad goes, so he's the best guitar teacher in the country. Look at the car he drives. And you want to go and do this. Yep. Where, where are you going? But that's the mark. That's the mark of a right. good musician. Broke his fuck. Broke his fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so I went, ah, he's got a point. Right? So he said, listen, if you want to do it as a hobby, do it as a hobby. Yeah. But go get a degree. So I ended up getting two. Now, I, didn't, I never told my parents about my stand-up career until – I got good enough okay. for them mm. to come and see me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's when I, that, so I didn't get any resistance. But by the time that I was good enough for them to see me, I'd already started making a lot of noise. And of mm. course, then when it really took off, I was earning in one night what I would have earned in one year having my degree. But it was a good thing to do. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, you yeah. need those backups. And that's very smart. They sound supportive, which is, which is nice. Yeah, they, is and good. they come on tour. They'll, they'll be here in New York. They're coming to New York. Awesome. They come to Toronto a lot. Um, they come all over Australia, wherever, wherever they can. So I'm really excited because they've never they've, – they've seen my show in Toronto, but mm -hmm. they've never been to see the show in New York. And, you know, it's a, it's a special thing yeah. to do a show in New York because of, you know, especially as, as an Australian, you know, when – you know that the, the you know the whole Frank Sinatra thing. When you when you make it there, you can make it anywhere. You mm -hmm. know. So for my parents to see uh, me do shows in New York is going to be a special time, especially because the shows are you know, pretty much all sold out. Too, you know? oh, that's awesome. That. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I see yeah. that. Now, what are your thoughts of you know the Italian Australian accents, and then when you hear our accents? Well, here's something really interesting. Mm -hmm. Um. So obviously, you know, my clips get out all over the world, right? But I've been abused, not abused, but I, like teased. No comments, like from people, Italian Americans going, "You're not Italian. You don't, you don't have a." We have a special you, group of those guys here. Trust me, yeah. we already know. We know you don't have an Italian American accent. You're not Italian. Hey, what? You're not Italian either, mate. If you right, you, you, you know, unless you talk like this, see, <laughs> when you're yeah, from Italy, awesome. the people have actually come from Italy. When they talk, the the word at the end they go up, and the vowel up, up. So that's a real Italian English accent. <laughs> oh, hey, Dawn, or get out, mate. You know, they were, yep, right. and I just thought it was fascinating. You know, how this Italian American guy thought that there's no way that I'm Italian because I don't have an Italian American accent, right? You know, but it's the same as when you go to Italy. Mm -hmm. They all think right. we're some Americani, right? Right. Even if I'm from Australia, they know too. So, so, yeah. so I'll get into the taxi and I go, you know, you know, I try and speak because it's funny. Like, here, yeah, I learned like to speak Calabrese before I learned like to speak English, right? right? But when you get to Italy, you, you can't speak anymore. You're like, I'm there. 
<laughs> so, so did any dialect change? Like, for example, I learned the the, the Sicilian of you know my my parents yeah, sixty years right. ago. Yeah. Now, if I go to Sicily, they don't even talk that anymore. No. Yeah, right. So when I go to Calabria, I, I speak to my dad's cousins like that. So they oh, freak right. out because they go, "Man, you speak the old dialect." Yeah, yeah there is. I mean? yeah. yeah. Um, but but we all learned that too. So I was born nineteen seventy four. All of my dad's family came to Australia in 1973. Mm-hmm. And when my nonny passed away, they didn't speak any English until the, even when they passed away. Right. Same, you know? yeah. So I'm actually a product of Calabria 1973. You know? There you go. So, yeah. yeah but we, we did, there was no English in my house growing up because my right. grandparents didn't really speak English. Yeah. So I, I learned a Sicilian. Yeah. And then it, I felt like English was my second language. Yeah. And um, and well, it, it, we try to keep that going even for my kids who are, you know who are born here. Well, things were a little different with me. So because Giacomo, the other guy who does this, my brother, yeah, he was the first born. So my dad coming here and being born, what after a year or two of my dad actually being here, he got the full brunt of the language. So yeah. he has more of a grasp than I do because right. then my dad started learning these English little things, you yeah. know, the yeah, American yeah. Italian yeah, yeah. things, and that's how I grew up. And now my little brother. Forget about it. He, he he's all over the place. He, yeah, right. You know, but it, things are. It's different. The only time I heard my grandparents speak great English is when they were upset and the cursing came out in English. That was said very well. <laughs> I got one for you. I was in the car with your brother, and remember, we had a lot of rides with your grandfather in the car. We're driving, and we, we always talk garbage. Yeah. We were like, oh, he doesn't understand. One day, we were at the store. Your grandfather was talking full sentences in English. Me and him looked at each other and go, fuck, he heard everything. <laughs> like, shit, he knows everything we talk about. Yo, it was like a sneak job. We're like, yo, when the fuck did he know all this English? He yeah, goes, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's actually good. Yo. Yeah, because yeah, all you grow up all your life going, man, he's not going to understand exactly. anything. Yeah. But really, they're not stupid, man. Oh, they're we're not. the stupid ones because we think we're... We're ahead of the game. We're ahead of the game. (laughs) But it's just amazing how you can you go all over the world and you've got all these little pockets of people who see this. It's called Italese. This this Italian English language, and it you know it's going to come to a point where that 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 language as a currency is going to die. Yeah, because there's no way our kids are going to be able to, even though you you want them to speak a bit of it. there's not going to be enough people around. Right. Like you got, are you guys related or friends or cousins or friends? Yeah. And yeah, but, well, right. my brother's here. So he's and my brother, brother. Usually there's four of us to do the show, yeah. uh, but they're out of state. Yeah. But do you guys do that thing that when you go out and, and, uh, and you got to introduce each other, go, ma, I guess they're Yeah. You know? Everybody's a cugino. <laughs> Everybody's a <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Even if they're not a cugino. Exactly. It's much easier yeah. to say to the American and go, uh, instead of saying, I guess there's no, it's either Cugino or Fratello, yeah. one of the two. Going down the family trees too long, it's like, no, I don't have yeah. the map out. I, no, I, no, my yeah. cousins. Just your cousins. Yeah. Cousin. Even <laughs> if it's third cousin, no, it's my cousin. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, the American, they don't, they, don't, they don't seem to have cousins. No, none of them. Uh, <laughs> they, they do. They just forget the ones after they become second cousins. That's it. They're, they're yeah. not related anymore. They don't anymore. talk about that cousin thing. Like, you know, we, no. No, we're tight. I might. I could tell you, I we're tight relationship even with my fourth cousins like we keep family yeah. tight yeah yeah and and this is what inspired me to do what i do is because yeah. i feel like the culture is slowly fading yeah and i just want to keep it alive unfortunately it is because of the environment that we're in we're in america man where do we you know it's supposed to be a melting pot it is but that melting pot eventually goes into one direction which is what american which is english which is american traditions eh. it's hard to keep it going it's hard like he even said if you don't have enough people from your region that you're originally from to be around, they will die out. They will die. But you guys are, but, but if I can say, you guys are, mm-hmm. the Italian Americans are different to the Italians anywhere else in the world. Yes. Okay, yeah. I'll tell you why. Because the Italian Canadians and the Italian Australians, see, it, it, Australia as a country, mm-hmm. Canada as a country, we don't make a lot of noise. We're not really the kind of people. Can- we, we're not the kind of, <laughs> We're not the kind of countries that cause wars, okay? No. We, we, we're not superpowers, mm-hmm. okay? So when you're an Italian in Australia, you're Italian, and that's it. Okay. You're not Italian in Australia. But because you guys have grown up here, mm-hmm. where America is a superpower, America is famous and one of the most famous countries in the world, everyone knows about America. 
the films that are the biggest films are from America. Some of the biggest musicians are from America. Right. You know, it's America. So you guys have that extra sort of, yeah, I'm Italian, but I'm also American. Right. Because America has a presence in the world. Yeah. So naturally people want to um, affiliate with. Right. Okay. Here's another example. So in 2006, mm-hmm. Australia played against Italy in the World Cup. I remember. Okay. Now, I was at a place, we were watching it. There were kids who were born in Australia, whose parents were born in Australia, who were waving Italian flags. That, that sounds what? like me. <laughs> they, they should really, in theory, be waving yeah, Australian mean, flags. Course. I was born in Australia. My parents were born in Australia. I'm Australian. No. Nope. Waving Italian flags. Why? Because Italy's a superpower in mm-hmm. soccer. Mm-hmm. So naturally, people want to gravitate yep. to their team. Their, you know, the, the, the people want to be associated with winners, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. So you guys are winning because you're Italian and you're, you're winning because you live in America and America's a superpower. That's why. You guys are very different to any of the other Italians anywhere else in the world. Well, also, also I, I noticed too the, mm-hmm. the difference. Like I've been to Italy. I've never been to Australia. I would love to be there. Yeah, uh, he has family out there. Yeah, I got my uh, cousin actually moved from Castellamare in Sicily yeah. to Australia. She actually got her citizenship. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. is the I, I feel and and I, I notice even if you leave New York just to say the fast paced environment here, mm-hmm. like you're always working, you're always running, you're always yeah. speeding. And when I even went to Italy, it's not like that. No, it's not. People enjoy life. You know, yes. I, I've noticed that they enjoy life. They enjoy the culture. They enjoy mm-hmm. their family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here is lucky if I I could squeeze in an appointment for Sunday just to eat yeah. dinner. You know, but yeah. It's... yeah. Here we 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 live to work. There they they work to live. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, and but you know that's just what the way that we, the world is. I mean, it, it seems like that in Australia, mm-hmm. you know. But then when you come to America and you really see it, you really feel it. And people are hustling, man. People are doing two or three things. Yeah. I've got two or three things on the go. Yeah. You know, There's a lot of Italians in Australia, right? There's a million Italians in Australia. And people don't know. Melbourne has the largest Greek population outside of Athens. I did not know that. 500,000 Greeks. Wow. Melbourne. So, wow. so you get. So last week there was a Greek singer who came out. Like, you know how we would have um, Eros Ramazzotti, whatever. Mm-hmm. 10,000 people right, sold out. Then wow. he goes to Sydney, another 10,000 people, all Greeks. Wow. That's you know awesome. what I mean? Um, so it's, it's huge. It's a, Australia, a lot of people don't realize it is, I think Melbourne is actually the, the most multicultural city in the world. We have a huge Asian population. Now, when I say Asian, I mean Chinese Asian. Mm-hmm. Because you've got to be, because sometimes, like in Canada, when you say Asian, they're talking about Indians as well. Oh, right, yeah, oh, okay. look at it as yeah. the whole, yeah, Asia. I, um, so I we, get it. The, the, the largest group to migrate to Australia in the last five years have been Indian as well. Wow. Wow. They're everywhere. They're going everywhere too now, right? So we've got a huge Asian population because obviously we're very close to Asia. And, and Asians don't they're trust their money in their own country, so they, right. they invest. We've actually got laws against people buying, like if you are a foreign investor, you must declare that you have bought. So there are wow. there are Asians who buy seventy million dollar homes, fifty million, five million dollar homes. Like you, you would you can see apartment blocks mm-hmm. right, where it's all sold out. Mm-hmm. But if you look at it at night, there's no lights on. Mm-hmm. No one's there. Wow. They're not. They don't even live there. Wow. They're in Asia, but hmm. they 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 buy they, there. They, they buy. There. They put their money into Australia because it's safer. Wow. You know. Wow. Yeah. It, there's me. I can't go to China now after I just said that. <laughs> Well, that's a closed market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somehow I didn't think I was going to ever do comedy in China anyway. Hey, you never know. I want... So speaking of that, uh, you, you've been all over the world. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Tell us, where have you had your best experience yeah. and what? where did you love being at? I want to hear the worst experience. And I, the worst, I live yeah. off those, man. Might be hard, Joe. Yeah, but... I, I live off those. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I've, I've, I, 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 every, every part is different. Every... Yeah. Every country is different to tour. Um, America's hard. Like, it's a hard slog. It's getting around is hard. It takes forever. The traffic and all that kind oh, of stuff. Yeah. The, I find the response time dealing in America, like with promoters, marketing, is about three times longer than anywhere else in the world. I don't know why it is. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, people just don't get back to you. It takes forever mm-hmm. to hear back, you know, how things go. You know, it, it takes a long time. Um, but, you know, we're in New York. You know, it's it's, it's one, of the, one of the hippest. You know, and, and I've seen it. I've seen the because I've been coming here for twenty years doing shows, right? So I've seen a, you know, I've seen the, the the changes. I've seen what's been happening in Brooklyn, you know, over the years and all that kind of. And the and the, it's a hip. It's so much hip here, you know. So I love coming back here. London's a great place to do shows. And I, I mean, I've, I've, the most places I've done shows is obviously in Australia and also Canada. I've done all over Canada. I've done every big town, small town. Nice. Um, where there's Italians in, in Canada. Um, worst experience, jeez. <sighs> I had this guy in Australia mm-hmm. who didn't like what I did. Mm-hmm. So he put a bomb threat at every single show. Stop. Right? In one city. So I had five shows. So the first time we, you know, and I had no idea. The first show, all of a sudden the, the, the manager comes out. Mm-hmm. So the support act is on. Mm-hmm. He waited. He so the show would start at eight o'clock. He'd wait till ten past eight. Ring the venue. There's a bomb there. So we would have to. So the the support act will finish. The manager comes and goes. Listen, mate. Someone's called a bomb. Mm-hmm. That is crazy. I'm like, what are we gonna do? He goes, oh, the bomb squad's on their way. I go, Minky, what did you call a bomb squad for, you idiot? You know, it's probably a hoax. So now we had to get 800 Italians out. Jesus Christ. And that's always easy. Meanwhile, 800 was trying to solve the problem instead, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm curious what the fuck you said. <laughs> because we, because the show was called Il Dago. Okay. He, he took offense to the word oh, Dago. Okay. He's one of those. Right? Right. And he would ring people who were selling tickets. How could you, how dare you, could, you, you know, if I ever see you, I'm going to throw acid in your face. He was threatening Jesus people. Jesus Christ. Right? Um, and then I had to get the whole. Per- Lucky, I was just so so. Then the next night, so the, the, we found out there was no bombs. The next night, I'm doing the next show again. The bomb scare, oh my and, then, gosh. and then it clicked. I go, right here, we've got a serial bomb threat guy here, Jesus right? But the venue didn't call the, the bomb squad, mm-hmm. it was with it. You know what? It's not, but he called it on every now. Some venue said, Man, if he calls, I'm gonna have to call the bomb squad. Yeah. I mean. Lucky there was a Calabrese detective in the room Stop. when this was all happening, and he took it upon himself to find the guy. No. Nice. So they set up, so they set up all this surveillance. They found the 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 because he would he would he was in a remote area on a phone box. He'd ring from a phone box. Unbelievable. They traced the call. They they got all the venues, they found out with a so they had a surveillance on the on the phone box. So it wasn't until two years later when I came back to do more shows and they had surveillance all over the venue, surveillance on this, on this um, phone box. What the idiot did was he made a threatening phone call at five to six in the morning to one of the people who sold the tickets. But the idiot, before he did that, called his friend. So it was a remote phone box. So the police had two numbers. One was the venue. The other one, they didn't the know who it was. So they rang that other number and they said, did uh, someone call you at five to six in the morning mm-hmm. last Wednesday? Because mm-hmm. yeah, my mate Frank called. Frank who? <laughs> Wasn't me. Frank such and such. Oh yeah, where does he live? I went and got him. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's a mad though, bro. I, I, know, and like I, he, he ended up being a guy. He had bipolar. He just oh he wasn't know, well. He was you know unfortunately he wasn't well. He wasn't all stable mentally and right. you know um uh, but mate yeah that's you know that's some excitement. Man, I've had. Oh, here's something for you. Oh, I got to hear this so, one. So I'm doing a show, and um, I mean, it's not a nice thing, but, you know, geez, it's, it's, it happened. <laughs> so I'm, doing, I'm doing a show. I love it when those are open. <laughs> and I'm, and, and I'm, doing, I'm delivering the punchline. The crowd's laughing, and I, I could hear this noise. <gasps> and it, hey, what the fuck? It's a strange noise to come out from the audience. I do another gag, big laugh. Oh. <gasps> And I'm starting to now figure out, because I can't see anybody. You can hear. I'm starting to figure out where's this noise coming from. Yeah. So I do another gag. Ooh, I'm starting to come from there. Uh-huh. So now I'm focused. And all I could see is every time I do a punchline, I could see this movement around about there, like, like a like a this, like a like a swinging movement. This guy that was having a fight with his girlfriend <gasps> in the show and was waiting for a punchline when it was a big laugh. 
so that no one will notice, and he would just whack his girlfriend. Stop it. Nobody else would notice this? Well, they would. Then I'm going to laugh, and they can't hear it either. Right? Wow. Oh, my God. He timed it. He Holy timed it shit. to smack his girlfriend. Oh, my God. And and, and then all of a sudden, there was a commotion. She gets up and leaves. So, and he was beating her up outside. It was awful. Uh, it was awful. Jesus oh, Christ. You know? But that's a, another thing that's happened. People have had, I've had epileptic fits. I've had a pregnancy, um, inducing a pregnancy because the lady was laughing so much. You know, it was just the, the waters broke at the show. You're, you're partial father now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're I induced. I induced. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, look, if I, if I really thought about it, I'm sure there's a lot of other but, situations, you I mean, know. You've been doing it for years, so I'm sure you have like a collective oh, of the stuff. Uh, yeah, there is. Yeah. And there's stories that I just can't tell. That's, you know, yeah, you know what? Write a book. <laughs> write the book. We'll I can't even it. write a book, but mate. Don't worry about it. We got, I'll, <laughs> tell me I'll write it. <laughs> these, are, these are just memories for me, mate. That's awesome. For That's me and some of my friends around the table, you know. I, I love these stories. They're so, yeah. oh, they're always good. I, I, I've got some really cool stories. I, 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 know, I know it sucks because I've said that and the, and the people watching are going to go, well, tell us the story. <laughs> I just can't tell you these stories, man. It's all right, man. It's all right. Listen, to... you share what you can, and yeah. if you can't, in the vault it goes. And, and look, I don't know because I, I do a podcast myself, and sometimes I interview like rock stars, you know. Mm-hmm. And like, tell us, tell us some of the you know right. drugs, rock and roll stories, and yeah. they, even they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my fan base is already shaky. Yeah. I don't need more. <laughs> well, of course, you know all these guys are. Our fathers now right, they're married. Right, you right. know, you know what you're rehashing the past, you know, and especially especially now. I mean. My kids could, you know, in, in 10 years' time, come and find this interview. Yeah. And I and go, I don't know that about you, Dad. <laughs> yeah. And maybe you know, I don't want them to know, you know, until they're at an age where I can tell them. But that's, that's also true. the part of us growing up, right? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to explore. Yeah. And then you think about it, like, wow, I did that. Yeah, yeah, I did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but that's, that's the good times of life. Usually my, I did that, and it ends with, <laughs> and that's usually where it goes. But yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah. But, it, but, you know, it's a fascinating thing, the whole being Italian and, and then taking it away. It's, it's fascinating to me how, see, uh, this is what I think. So you could get four people from the same village in Italy, mm-hmm. okay? Like, mm-hmm. what really, where do you guys come from? Are you guys from the same village? No, I'm from Castellamare del Golfo. And I'm he's from, from Provincia de Palermo. So uh, I'm going to say this one because it's much easier to say Vinci, uh, uh, a Provincia de Palermo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> say the town, just because, say the town. Because if I've got to try Castellamare del Golfo. It's all right. It's okay. all right. It happens. Anyway. If you're from Provincia de Palermo, <laughs> you get four guys from Provincia uh, Provincia de Palermo. Sure. And you send one to Canada, one to America, one mm-hmm. to Australia, one to England. Mm-hmm. Now these four people never speak to each other ever. Mm-hmm. Fast forward 40 years. These you get all these people uh, yep. and uh, put them in one room, or you get a camera and you look at each of their lives. They've all gone, and it's amazing how we all Put the plastic on the furniture. Mm-hmm. How we have the lions at the front. <laughs> how we call the creatures. <laughs> it's amazing how in the eighties, every second Italian uncle had a bad back and was on compensation. Mm-hmm. They never had this stuff in Italy. No. Why? How? It's like they were given a manual. Yeah. I said, when you get to these countries, you must pick the new this. Mm-hmm. You oh. must put olives in the butter container. Mm-hmm. The that you can never touch. Like you know, uh, 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 we call it a cristallera. Cristallera. Mm. You know what that is, actually is? That that's a place where the bomboniere go to die. Yes. Yes. It's a yes. it's a graveyard for bomboniere. That's what that's what that's, I could then is. Hilarious. You know, and you go in there and there's that the the, the bomboniere mm-hmm. that have been there for forty years and the sugar coated almonds that not, have not even disintegrated, not one little bit. And I'm thinking. This is like an anti-aging tablet here. Yeah. You know, I've got to get me some of this almonds, sugar-coated almonds. Because whatever that got, that shit's got in it, it never fades, mate. Let me tell you something. I'm the type of guy who would be like 40-year-old. Let me try it. I'll bite right into it. Don't get me. I'll lose three teeth trying to bite into it. But I'm oh, going to yeah. eat it. Uh, I, I still have family today. When someone goes to Italy... Yeah. You know, they're coming back with cheese. They're coming back oh, with yeah. the oregano. Sussex, but they also have to come back with the, with the confetti because yeah. it's different from here. It's Let me is, tell you, it is. Alitalia is the only airline in the world where the overhead compartment is refrigerated. <laughs> that's, a... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's, awesome. that's true. That is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, telling yeah. you. Listen, and we always send over the oil, man. I got all these olive trees. We send over yeah. liters and liters of oil over here. I don't know if it's like it's in Australia. We've actually got oil that's better than in Italy because 
because obviously people have been growing. Oh, oh. Controversy. Dude, nah, let me okay. put it to you like my father was here, he See? would argue with you. I'm just okay. gonna tell you right now. Well, there. a friend of mine, he's actually he's got a but okay. he's from, from Australia. He he's he sits on the he's a, a world expert on olive oil. So oh, he's got a wow. he's got a restaurant called Pendolino. Pendolino is a type of um olive. Okay. okay? So he owns the only oil what he calls an olio teca. Mm. So when you go to his restaurant, so you know when you go to you know, have a nice digger station meal and, you, and they do the wine pairing, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. right? Well, you, he does olive oil pairing. Ooh, he nice. doesn't use any olive oil for any dish. Wow. They use different olive oils depending on what they cook. Wow. And he was the one who told me. Um, so he he's in you know he's a world expert on olive oil. Right, right, right. And I asked him the question. Yeah. I said, so where's he? Where do you get the best olive oil? He goes, right now, um, it's in Tasmania, which is a little island mm-hmm. underneath Australia. Mm-hmm. That's where we're getting the best olive oil in the world. But he he blends it. So he says oh. there was some good olive oil that came out of here. Now I wasn't sure. If it meant because it was sold here or, or produced, but did, did they produce olive oil here in in, in America? I don't. Not that I, I, don't, not that I, I know. I don't think so, right? No, I don't think so. Um, but he blends it, so he gets all the best <laughs> olive oils in the world and makes his own version. And he said that we have got some great olive oil because also you got to think mm-hmm. this oil is is sitting on a shipping container. Mm-hmm. Well, back in those days, it would take three months for a shipping container to get from. Right. From Italy to Australia. Right, from freezing to boiling. Yeah. Right. So you're going through all different yep. climates. Yeah. Now, now they don't yeah. refrigerate olive oil, I don't think, right? No. So no. you're going, you've got to go through the equator to get to Australia. Yeah. So you're going through hot, cold, hot, cold, cold yep. hot. That, wow. that, you know, now that's what my degree is food science. That's wow. what that's what I did, right? So that that changes a product. And then it sits for almost for months in customs. And sometimes. then in customs. Yeah. Right. And then they put it on the, you know, the, the shelf and then, you know. So that's olive oil, which gets used. Yeah. But can you imagine things like biscotti and chocolates? We've got to travel three months from Italy. They go through customs. Then they get sold to the delicatessen. They sit there. Mm-hmm. Then the nonna buys it. The, 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 the biscuits sit in her cupboard for six or seven years. Right. And then they eat them. <laughs> so, that's why they dip it in milk. To. That's why they dip it in milk for half an hour. They just let it sit. They let, <laughs> it, let, it, let it do its thing. And then uh, my grandma used to always have... You know, the biscotti for the company. Oh, yeah. And then that's for you over there. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had that for right. but we had, well, not my, one, one of the relatives had that for toilet paper. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, man. The really? soft ones for the company? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. Tree box for you, yeah. soft one for him. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they can't even visit. They can't even toilet paper. They can't even toilet paper. They can't even toilet paper. They can't even Unbelievable. Even with the towels. Do you ever experienced that? Imagine that the guy's taking a shit. <laughs> like it's the castle no cheap. <laughs> yeah, 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 Next yeah. time I'm going to Kumari's house, I'm taking a dump there. <laughs> Ooh, this is Bello Tola Pandano. Bello nice as <laughs> that's great oh man that's funny no it's funny because uh when you were mentioning the olive oil because remember mm-hmm. no matter where you're from the person who's from that place will say we have the best yeah dude i got we got friends who are greek they go we got the best one because the the, the dirt the clay is red it's red clay mm-hmm. and gives this nutrient to the thing and mm-hmm. i go get the fuck out of here man my mounds in italy have the best olive oil <laughs> yeah but greeks are like that they're about you know they're greeks invented proud. everything yeah yeah, true, and they're yeah. very similar to us too. I'll see, like oh, I mean, family yeah. wise. Listen, yeah, listen, they invented everything, but we perfected the rest of it. Ah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's that old joke? Greeks invented sex, and, and Italians introduced it to women. Yeah, yeah. you go. Know? <laughs> hey, you said it to me last week, Quincy. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, listen, it is what it is, man. That's those are facts. Oh, there's always that. You, you guys have that Greek Italian rivalry here. Ah, uh, not so much. I have Greek friends. Um, I, I say yes. You, you know, think so? yeah. I don't have those. Australia is massive. Yeah, the really? Greek Italian rivalry. Well, I mean, we we'll, look. We have a rivalry, but when the Aussies are ganging up on us and we get together. Right, 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 right. You know what I mean? Because then we're all ethnic, right? Right. All the, the immigrant kids. I actually saw, uh, I guess, a lot of them came out yeah. when uh, Greece finally won the Euro Cup one year. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. And I was like, where did everybody come from? Right. But, you know, they're here. They're hiding. They're hiding <laughs> until something good happens. Hey, that's us. And then they go back. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know why? Because the Greeks are always going to go, yeah, we're, we're you know, uh, because look, you got to give it to the Greeks. Mm-hmm. They invented a lot of stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. But then they did nothing. <laughs> they have a, they're in and a lull. Just, they're in a lull and right they now. They just said they, they they were like, we invented everything. That's all we needed to do. That's it. And then they sat back. <laughs> Here you go. We started the process. You guys finish yeah. it. I'm yeah. done. <laughs> it's so funny, isn't it? The 
Yeah, but we have a massive Greek population here. So lots of Greeks come to the show. Look, we get on really well. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I, I, Greece is one of – have you guys been to Greece? No, I have not, no. Oh, man, I love Greece. I, 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 I've been to Mykonos a few times. I had my 40th birthday in Mykonos. Um, we're going now again. We're going to Paros. We're going to Mykonos. Mm. Uh, I, I really enjoy the Greek islands. It's nice. great, great place to, to relax. I, don't don't I, make fun of me, but I'm scared to fly. So for me to go somewhere, really? it takes a – it takes a long convincing, but I, I I've been to Italy. You're right. You know, um, I'm scared to fly. I'm scared to wow. fly. I had a bad experience once, and that kind of really, yeah, yeah. You know what? You, the, the best thing I've got a few friends who are pilots. Just speak to a pilot. You know, mm. that, that will comfort you. Yeah. I mean, well, firstly, they're not going to put themselves into a, a scenario where, right? You know, no, it's it's you know, look. Obviously, I catch a lot of flights. You know, I mean, just in two weeks, I've gone from so from Australia. To Vancouver, Vancouver, to LA, LA, Winnipeg, Winnipeg, Edmonton, Edmonton, Calgary, Calgary, here. Jesus, and then tomorrow I'll do Boston, Pittsburgh, Chicago the next night, Montreal wow. the next day, up to down to Ottawa, Toronto, all through Canada. But there's, you know, there's probably 30 flights in in two months. You should you know? try to be a flight attendant, man. Well, I was going to try and buy a plane. <laughs> oh, well, there you yeah. go. Thought, you know, I should buy a plane with all the flying I'm doing, but yeah, no, that ain't happening. <laughs> That's a lot of it would flying. Make it easier though, that's for sure. My wife likes nice bags. Oh, gotcha. I can't get the plane. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys ever travel together to when you do the yeah, shows? So, um, th- my family don't come on this part of the tour until July, till middle of July, because it's just too hectic. I mean, can you? I've got a two year old. It's just oh, wow. way, way too hard to um to 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 bring a little two year old every day, moving a, a two year old. You know, like yeah. tomorrow, Boston. Then we've got to, we, we're staying in one night in, Bo- in six o'clock in the morning, fly to Pittsburgh on Saturday. Oh, children. And then, and then get up at nine o'clock in the morning, fly to Chicago, seven o'clock in the morning on Monday and fly to Montreal. It's too much for, for a kid. kid. Yeah. So my, my family will join me in Toronto, um, where I've also got a kid. We've got, I've got a, a daughter in, in there as well. And, uh, and then we'll all spend some time together. My parents are coming over. Then oh, we all nice come back thing. here. Oh, nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they come to the good part of the tour. There you go. Just before we go to Italy and Greece and that. <laughs> so your your show is coming air here in July. Yeah, so July the 29th at Queen's Theatre, um, Connecticut as well on the next night. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. so I'm looking forward to it. I think the, the, the late show sold out. The, the early show is, you know, probably 80% sold already. So, nice. you know, by the time July comes, it'll be, it'll be sold out. A um, lot of new material. Look, I've been. Th- th- this is the interesting thing. I've been coming here for twenty years, mm-hmm. right? And I stopped coming here because it was hard. And then, because of um, social media and COVID, was actually really good for me because a lot of people went down rabbit holes right. that they'd never gone before. So all of a sudden, I started getting discovered. Right. Social media again. Yeah. yeah. Kind of like I became famous again in America. Right. Because of that. <laughs> That's but I also. I also copped a lot of abuse from Sebastian Maniscalco fans because they're like, man, you're trying to be Sebastian Maniscalco. I go, look, I love Sebastian. He's fantastic. I went to mm-hmm. see him live and it's a fantastic act, great act, mm-hmm. you know, and, and hugely successful, mm-hmm. you know. But I've been doing this a lot. I'm not saying that I invented no. this or that I taught. No. You've been I mean, out there. But what do you expect? He's an Italian-American Mm-hmm. From Chicago, who's forty nine years old, mm-hmm. who grew up with a really Sicilian dad. Mm-hmm. I'm an Italian Australian who's forty nine years old, who grew up with a very calabrese dad. Of course, we're going to have exactly the same experiences. Right, absolutely. So I'm talking about it. Right. So people like, so I don't know. People get weird. They're like, oh, he's done uh, a joke about Malokyu. You can't do a joke about Malokyu. <laughs> but please, you know. But that's what I'm saying. These yeah. are the type of people that you just look at and you just go, just go inside. Just do just your homework, mate. It. You know, do something. I've been man. doing this for a long, long time. You know, for Absolutely. a long time, and and I think it's great. I mm-hmm. think it's great that there's all these other um, ethnic comedians doing it now. Oh yeah, you know, it's fantastic. Oh, you know, you, there's there's always room. There's, you can only be in one place at one time, right? So my wife introduced me to you. Yeah, how long ago? Twenty years ago. Twenty years ago. Yeah, there and you go. Ever yeah. since then, it's just you know, you want some laughs. I always bring up Jawadi because yeah. it's it's gold. You know, yeah, thank you, mate. It's thank you. It, it is it. now a staple in the household. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, Who would have thought 20 bread. years later I'll, I'll have this man sitting next you to me? You never know, man. That's what well, life mate, That's you. what life takes. Exactly. You know, it's a great thing. Yeah. It's a great thing. And it's great what you guys are doing, you know, keeping the culture alive. Absolutely. It's like there was a, there's a resurgence. 
So and 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 it's a great thing because of all the kids. That's just what they. That's yeah. the only thing. It's they an have, identity. You know? they, it's an they identity. want identity. Well, exactly right, mate. Because if you can give somebody, mm -hmm. and if you can make, it's very powerful to be able to give somebody an identity, to, to make them. Because people don't want to walk around not knowing where they belong. Exactly. Like, there's, there's a lot of confusion. Mm -hmm. You know, even with this whole, you know, the transgender movement and, and, and gender identity politics, mm -hmm. people are trying to figure out who they are. Right. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and you can see it. People, want, people are wanting to change who they were born. Yes. Right. Because they want to try. They don't feel comfortable. And, and so when you can do something to do, very powerful and, uh, and it makes people have an affinity to you, you know, because right. sometimes I have people coming to the show going, man, I thought my family was the only fucked up family. And then when I come to see your show, everyone else is laughing at the same thing that I was traumatized about. Yeah. Or they would hear it on a CD and they go, shit, I'm not the only one. Right. Yeah. Oh, wow. Not alone. Oh, okay. I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. oh. And it makes people Absolutely. feel like they belong. It's amazing how this actually soothes people. Yeah. It makes him understand, like you say, he's not the only person. Yeah. It makes you feel less crazy. Like, you're sitting there going, why did it happen to me? How come they did this? How come this? And then you're sitting there and goes, there's 40 other people who did the same exact shit yeah. as I did. Wow. Yep. I'm, I'm, I can actually talk to these people. Yeah. Well, where, where it gets really specific is that some people, because I've had this as well, mm -hmm. where um, I, I had a, a father come up and say, I need to thank you because you've brought, you've repaired the relationship I had with my son. Because oh. this kid oh, that's thought, why is my dad like this? He didn't like the fact that his dad was like this, so he, he just got him out of his life, right? Mm -hmm. Then the, the kid realized, oh, this is not just my dad. Every Italian dad is like this. Like this. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. And they repaired their relationship yeah. because of it. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. So that's where it really hits because you can't make the adult change. I mean, that's who they are. And it's like, if you wanted them to change to be better, it is what it is. But that's what they know. Yeah. You know, if you were raised by a savage, guess what? You're a savage. This is how it is. You can't expect someone who was raised difficultly as, as our parents were to come here and be nice, bubble selfish. It doesn't no, that's work. That's right. And again, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. I mean, and I've seen it. I've seen the way that my dad was with me and the way he's with my kid. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, my Completely dad's, opposite, right? Oh, he's on the phone with my daughter and he says to her, um, uh, she she does. My daughter does taekwondo, and, and so I said, "Papa, make sure you tell her that you know you know she's done really well." Mm -hmm. All right, all right. So he's on the phone. Eh, no, no, like to say, mm -hmm. you know, very proud for you. Mm -hmm. I love you, mm -hmm. and I miss you. And I'm like, what did he just say? Exactly, exactly. I know exactly. I've toured the world. I've sold yes. out. I've had number one mm -hmm. albums. I'm this and that. My dad. Right, you see the side yeah. of him you never saw. When did he ever say he's proud of me? Right, yeah. I think you know when he told me once when I got the day I got married. I had to get married mm -hmm. so he could tell me I was proud. See? <laughs> I got one even better. Both my brothers, they all have kids. I'm the only one who doesn't have kids. I see how my father is with them. I go, Pa, show them how crazy you really are. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I want this shit to fall out. Find it in that part of their goes, Don't go if I call him an idiot for half an yeah. hour. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> you know, it's funny. As soon as I become non they get amnesia. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> Because I said to my son, Antonio, don't touch. Papa will give you a smack. My mom, yeah. I, I'm not touching you. You're not touching him. Mm -hmm. But what did you forget? Mm -hmm. right? You can amnesia. Mm -hmm. And every Italian nonna says this. Me? I never, never. touch My you. little cave. My, my little cave. Little cave. Yeah, right, yeah. The, the other one was, and it's funny, you know, you're a kid. So junk food, pizza, right. you know, yeah. McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that, it's junk, it's shit. Stop pasta, yeah. Stop porcaria, yeah. Stop. And then today I get home saying, "Where the kids? Oh, dad took them to McDonald's." I'm like, hmm. exactly, exactly. <laughs> I was like, oh. but, but I was 14 or 15 before I had a Big Mac, okay? Because there was absolutely no way. Right. And then my dad was there. He deconstructed the hamburger. Yeah. He took it apart. <laughs> the mayonnaise, ma che sta crema. Oh, shit. The pickle, sti zucchini che fanno, right? <laughs> and and and. <laughs> and I was never like, no, no, man, jamas to rubbish, no, no, man, just to Wow. And then recently, so because I live in Melbourne, my mm -hmm. parents live in Sydney. So we flew up. Mm -hmm. um, my dad picks us up from the airport. My son's still two. We're driving to his house. My son sees the golden arches. There we right? go. Ah, 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 ah. We turn to go up a street. 
obviously my son realizes that we are not going into McDonald's, we're going away from McDonald's. <laughs> he starts crying. That's my dad, it. Yeah. Oh, don't worry about it, Dad. He he saw the, the McDonald's and he wants to all right, let's no go, worry. let's go. I'll bring you there. No mm-hmm. worry. Well, who, who are who is this man? Who is this guy? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Believe that unbelievable. Well, they say is you know the love that they didn't get to share because either my dad was always working yeah. or is now they show it to the grandkids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Which is fine, you know, as long as it doesn't reciprocate like the same way we got it, they're gonna get it. It's like, all right, I'll take the 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 whole niceness here. That's I'm happy with. That. But, but, but what do you expect? This is why the kids are so spoiled. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. Because our parents. Give our children things mm-hmm. that they didn't give us. Not be, right. just little things like right. like love and affection. Right. You know things that would change just, your life. Yeah, you know, just little whatever. Things. I still remember, nineteen years old. I'm in the car with your brother, three other guys. I get a random phone call from my mother. Nine thirty. Hey, what are you doing? I'm like, all right, what's going on? Nothing. When you get a phone call, you're like, yeah, something's yeah, wrong. Yeah. No, I just wanted to see what you were up to. I'm like, oh, okay. She goes, love you. Okay. Yeah. I hung up. And then I go, that was weird. G goes, your brother goes, what's wrong? I'm like. Your mom says she loved me. And he goes, I got to call back. Who's sick? Yeah, yeah. She goes, no one. I'm like, then who's dying? Yeah. Nobody. Then why the fuck did you say that to yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, And I'm like, I, oh, I can't say I love my kids. I said, I'm waiting for the last time you said it. Yeah. You let me know. I'll be, I'll apologize right now. Let me know the last time you told me. That's actually a good bit. Yeah. I'm going to steal that. Go ahead. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Go ahead. It, it, just, just last week, my mom, same thing. Same thing. Yeah. I love you, mom. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're going to get a phone call later. <laughs> she gives me a call during work, and usually at work, I don't answer. Yeah. And I answer the phone, she called me a second time. I said, hey, mom, what's the matter? Everything okay? I just want to say I love you. I said, all right, mom, I love you too. I hung up. I froze. I'm like, mom, what's the matter? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying, man. They throw you off. And then when you see them with the grandkids and stuff, you're like, all right, I see it. But it's like, because then you know what it is? Not only does it go towards the grandkids, but then a little bit rubs off on you. Yes. Because they see how they are, and they're like, I could be a little softer. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you start seeing a side, you're like, where was this guy yeah, where, where? <laughs> when I was in high yeah, school? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I needed this guy you start right to here. realize that your dad's human. Oh, yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Phone, remember, you, you remember you get that phone call in the middle of the night? Because back in the day, obviously, before mm-hmm. before cell phones, you know, mm-hmm. if the phone rang at 3 o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. you know, you know, you eat it. It's, an, it's an emergency. Yeah. 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 Come on. You know, in, 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 in Italy. phone rang, you sweat. Like, oh. yeah. What about when they used to ring Italy? Yeah. And for some strange reason, like the longer, so like the 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 volume of their voice was directly proportional to the distance, you know. Yes. You know, everything can chill. Could you know Italia? Pronto! Like they they would just yell, and I thought that they had to project the voice. Unbelievable! Go all the way to Italy. Unbelievable! But that's still today. Like uh, uh, Italians are loud. Yeah, like, mate. Oh yeah. They're loud. Oh yeah. Because you know? we have a lot to say, and we want to make sure you hear it. That's what it is. That's what it is. We want to be hurt. Look, I, I, I love my father to death. You know, I'll do everything for him. He lives next door. Yeah, right. Of course he does. What? <laughs> <laughs> what did you move next door or did, did they move in? No, nah, he moved, I moved next, next door. door. Yeah, of course yeah. he did. That's just the natural <laughs> progression. And sometimes I'm surprised he, you don't live in the basement. <laughs> no. That, in their basement. Yeah. Sometimes he makes, you know, of course, he has a lot of relatives in Italy. Yeah. I don't have to be next to him from my kitchen window. I just see oh, the. Yeah, you can hear him, yeah. They're just so loud. But you know what? I enjoy hearing that. But but, but in Italy, it's even worse because in Italy, they all live in the same homes, yes. and and they're like you can really hear everywhere, everywhere. everywhere. You yeah. Can yeah. Hear. yeah, 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 yeah. Even when they're selling the fruits in the streets, they just yeah get bit them. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my grandmother used to sit outside and wait for them. Oh, Tito, sono le sette mattina. Yeah. I know. <laughs> It's funny when you go to Italy and you, and you want to sleep in. You can't sleep in no, in an Italian no, house. No, you can't. There's you two can't. things you can't do in an Italian house. One is no. sleep in, nope. and the other is a low carbohydrate diet. You yeah. can't do. You can't <laughs> have that. Okay, but it's it works just, for them. They're but, skinny yeah, because they only eat. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but, look, I, I, it, they they only because they walk right. They only eat little bits because yeah. they, and they're very they're very vain, mate. They're very vain people. That's true. You know what I mean? So they're all about the appearance and what what they look like. And for me, I'm yeah. slapping Cheetos on my stomach like, well, oh, I care. <laughs> Whatever. Joe, maybe you get a kick at it. So my first time going to Italy because I do have more relatives there than here. Yeah. I went for ten days. Yeah. And when I finally got there, you know, I met my uncles. I met my uncle. So happy I was there. He had to show me everything, you know, because you know how towns are. Come see the the bathroom, the bedrooms, everything, right? 
but he wanted to show me his farm. His farm. His farm. 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 I didn't. I, so we went home. I dropped. I dropped. I dropped my luggages, and we headed to Campania. It was about a two-hour drive. Yeah. So he showed me his beautiful land, watermelons, yeah. figs. Yeah. He had me working there. My first day there for three and a half hours. <laughs> and I remember my uncle going me, Dumane, Chovene. I said, No, no, Tio, I'm okay. I'm good. Yeah. I'm gonna go to the beach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. Yeah. I love it when you go to Italy and, and it's boiling hot. Oh yeah. And they got air conditioning. No use. But no one ever puts it on. No. Nope. Like, let, let, let's let's what should we wait till it gets to Oh, well, we deal with Celsius. Mm. You guys do Fahrenheit. Yes. What's really hot in Fahrenheit? Like, what's a really... Like, like, a, like 85. In, 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 in the 90s, it's, it's a heat wave. It's a heat wave. Yes. Yeah. So you're like, let's wait for the... Should we wait till it gets to 90 before we turn it on? What do you think, Gugino? Or 91? Oh, well, no. You know, when, you know... That didn't happen. My, when we went there, it was uh, me, my older brother, my father. We had a space upstairs where we slept. My grandmother was already asleep 2 o'clock in the morning. This is how afraid we were of my grandmother. My father would come up next to us while we're sleeping and goes, let's go downstairs. Turn on the air conditioner. But I got to turn it off right away. <laughs> we snuck AC <laughs> for an hour and a half. Once we turned it on and he heard something, he goes, shooter, shooter. Then he would go open up the, the door for outside. And then we would go back to bed. And that's how we got away with getting away with AC every night. <laughs> I don't know if you guys experienced right. Unbelievable. I went to visit a relative. I, I won't mention names. And this was my experience. Uh, I slept over his house. I took a shower. 15 minutes in, mm -hmm. the hot water stopped. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They shut the hot water yeah. off on me because you can't stay there too long. Yeah, no. no, no. In some parts of Italy, they actually shut the water off completely. completely. Oh, they yeah. just switched. They had a switch just for hot yeah. water. Yep. Yeah. And, I was, and I'm all soaked. But I'm like, everything's different. Like when you go, because you guys haven't been to Greece. When you go to Greece, Everywhere in Greece, doesn't matter if it's Athens mm -hmm. or in the islands, mm -hmm. you're not allowed to flush toilet paper. It's big signs everywhere. Really? Do wow. not flush the toilet paper because the sewage system was built in such a way that mm -hmm. it couldn't take wow. toilet paper. So they've got a basket, and then, you know you're right. supposed to do what you got to do and throw, throw it in, in there. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people who do that. Believe it or not, but it's funny too. I just don't remember I was by my grandmother's house. You know the La Santa. <laughs> she would go in there. I would get in the shower, not even five minutes in, and I could hear from outside. Yeah. Five minutes in. Come on, get the hell out of here. Come on. Five minutes. Let me clean. And then it was every day because I like to shower once a day. It was hot over there. I'm sweating. Yeah. Nope. That didn't fall really yeah. well. Nah, I'm telling you, man. It was like a life of misery. They're all living like they're about to hit another depression. No. I, no, that the older crowd does. Mm. Like my grandmother. Like they're saving yeah, something. But, yeah, but you got to understand that they've gone through that. I know. We, so, so they've been scarred. Uh, yeah, you know, they've got, they've got um, post-traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they've got you know post-depression <laughs> stress disorder. They, Back in the day, forever, it keeps on going. You know what I mean? Even if my we, my my family did well in Australia, yeah. with my nonni, my nonni used to live with my uncle. We lived in a m mansion of a house. Wow. Right, my nonna. Wow. So she would she would make me my cornflakes in the morning. She put my serviette to there. Mm -hmm. I dropped some milk. Uh -huh. I went and got another towel. Right, right. A towel. Right. Started wipe. No, if you do, you can fade. Not chip this on you. So she would get the one next time. She goes, just the one that you've got. Rip it in half. Use half to. Uh -huh. But we live in a million dollar house. This thing costs. Point one cent. What? Right. But for them, that's just it's the something. way that it was. You know what I mean? Saving, preserved. Caution, of course, yeah. and of course, there's great things that come out of it. Of course, because they, because of the poverty, you know, they used every bit of the animal, mm -hmm. and so all the wonderful delicacies that have come mm -hmm. out of that. Imagine that. You just you, you, you imagine if if we, you know, what we do now, I kill an animal, just use the good parts, throw out all the right. all the other parts. That's why they eat ufi yeah, the chicken uh, livers, you, you, the barbecue that that Vito does. Uh, it starts with the S. Stigiola, Stigiola. Right. Who, who would eat that normally? I, I couldn't eat what that. I've never, it's a Sicilian it, world. It's, it's, it's in a Sicilian thing. So it's basically um, meat wrapped with intestine. Oh, right. it's, all, it's a sheep intestine. Yeah, but right. the meat itself, the middle part, is that it's a wrap, no, but wrapped like like a salami wrap or, or yeah, it's it looks like a hot dog that just got wrapped with like twine. Oh right. Okay. But then yeah. when you cook it, because of the grease from yeah. the inside. You, it causes like forest fires. Yeah, right. you know you gotta gotta make sure you're over there with the fan yeah, doing yeah, it right. You know, yeah, right. it's delicious though. I I, I I can't eat it, man. It's too rubbery for me. Yeah, so I can't eat dripper. 
I can't either. I can't either. Yeah. yeah. Well, my, but my wife, she's half Calabrese, half Polish. Mm. So the Polish side had tripe. Oh, okay. so she can eat tripe. Wow. I just, I don't know. I just too chewy. I just don't like the taste. I don't know. I don't like the taste of kukuta. Yeah, right. They, yeah. They, they, you know, everybody in my family enjoys it and has bowls of pasta and soup. I, I, I can't. Yeah, right. All right. Yeah. Well, well, Joe. Thank you. Oh, no, Absolutely. man. It's been a great chat. It's been a lot of fun, mate. Thank thanks you so much. Thank you, mate. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, and um, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Thanks for the, everyone watching. I hope it was interesting for you guys. Um, and uh, I'll see you in July. I'm not sure when this is going to air, but mm-hmm. um, I'll be back in July. And look, and, and I'll be back next year too because um, we're making some plans because America's really sort of – and it's great. I, I, I'm enjoying it because it's like I've become famous again mm-hmm. and it's so many people <laughs> – like I met someone last night who came to the show and said, man, I only found out about you eight months ago. Yeah. That's you know? insane. I, I, I've been doing it for 20 here, but yeah. years, you know. See? So it's exciting. I, I don't take that as, as a – No. I, I actually get excited and, we, you know, and, and it's grown. The, the, the show's grown because it's not just – Italians who have this experience. Mm-hmm. There were Indians in the show last night, oh, African Americans. I do a lot of show in New Zealand, the Maoris, yeah. like the same thing. You know, I, I, some of my stuff blew up in India as well. They've wow. got a very, very similar you know, yeah. you know, for us, like, you know, when we go to do the visa, the, our parents would say, you know, your mum was a non tokari biscotti. Yeah. <laughs> they had the same thing, but their mum would say, don't touch the papa dum. <laughs> <laughs> that's the same thing. I'm anyway, telling we'll you, leave that's it at awesome. That. Yeah. Sounds good. Yo, right. my door is always open for you anytime you're in New York. Thank you very much. Now I know where you live. There you go. There you go. And yeah. we got those, we got some sandwiches for you. I think that uh, the boys bought them if you guys oh, want. Yeah. Really? I want to give a big shout out to Mario Meats and Deli. Joe, you got to go see this guy, Middle Village. Um, great food. Um, Joe just came from there. Uh, I, you got to go there. That's where I go. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I love the butcher shop. <laughs> <laughs> But again, Joe Avadi, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, guys. July 29th here in Queens, Queens Theater. Come check them out. I'll see you guys. I'm definitely going to be there. Yeah. Yeah, so, you guys will be there. Yeah. yeah. We'll be there. We're all, we have a big crew coming for you, Joe. We're coming. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Take it easy.